I probably would have tried to come to him cleaned up. Right. But once I saw that, I was like, oh, you don't care about that, Lord. You want me how I am. And that's kind of ugly this morning. Yeah. Because to be honest, last night, I wasn't very kind to my husband. Mm. And that's how I went into the presence of God this morning. Like, blah. Dang. And I was about to put a worship song on. I'm like, I love you, God. And I'm just so. And the Lord said, Sarah Beth, I'm not in the tomb of dead works or religion. I'm alive. And I think that that is what has healed my spiritual boredom and apathy is knowing that you're not in the tomb of religion. You're not at the place where I would try to put on a religious face. You're alive and you want my heart. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Handlebar Podcast. This is our YouTube channel and we're so glad you're here. And I wanted to tell you about two things before the episode starts. Number one, I just wrote a book. Big Jesus. This is out now everywhere that books are sold. And I want to invite you to go get that book, especially if you're a Gen Zer. Man, I wrote this book for you. My hopes is that as you read it, it will spark wonder uh, and fascination in your heart for who Jesus is. He's a really big, big Jesus. Go get the book. Number two, I wanted to let you know that we here at the Handlebar Podcast are completely listener funded. Uh, you may have noticed if you're listening to the podcast platform that there's no ads. Also, we haven't done a sponsor. We've just been completely listener funded. And I want to ask you if this podcast has blessed you uh, that you would consider giving. You can give on our website, which will be in the description below. You can go over there. You can donate five bucks, 10 bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever would be a blessing to you. It would definitely bless us and it would help us continue to build the platform, put more things out. We love you. We're so glad you're here. Enjoy the episode and don't forget to subscribe. Welcome to the Handlebar Podcast. Welcome back to the Handlebar Sessions. Uh, I'm Rafi, and this is Sarah Beth. Hey, guys. And we are really excited about this. We're having conversations. It's a different style. It looks different in here. Like, But um, these are, these are just going to be a different kind of conversation. So we have questions from you guys that we're going to be talking about. Uh, the conversation is only like 10 minutes. Thanks, Boaz. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit shorter, but um, we're so excited that you guys are here with us. So We're welcoming you into our living room. Yeah, literally. So uh, we have Boaz here, our friend. He's dope. And he's going to ask us the question. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're supposed to drum roll. <laughs> Always. He took that drum roll. All right, go. <laughs> How to overcome spiritual boredom slash apathy. And who, who asked the question? Wow. Grace J. Grace J. She's 18. 18 years old. She's from Concord, North Carolina. From Concord, North Carolina. Wow. Dang. And it's how to overcome spiritual boredom or apathy. Whoa. Okay. Oh my gosh. Aaron always does the timer. Dang it. Where, okay. 10 minutes. the timer, Rafi? 10 minutes. Starting. Now. Here we go. All right. How to overcome. Holy Spirit, come. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a really good question. Yeah, I'm just and trying I think to think back to a time. Yeah, me too. I think it's a question that we've all asked at some point in our yes. lives, you know? That's worth saying. Like, I think there is no one who follows Jesus that hasn't had a moment where they felt apathetic towards the word, right. apathetic towards conversations with him or just feeling far Mm -hmm. It's such a real feeling that that everyone has felt at one time or another. So you're not alone. Yeah. yeah. I think the first thing that comes to my mind is there was a time in my life where I thought staying in the secret place or um, staying like pursuing the Lord was up to me. Hmm. And then probably a few years ago, maybe five years ago, the Lord just began to speak to me like, I'm the one who keeps the fire burning. Oh. You don't, I, I don't even, I don't even light the own fire, my own fire in my heart. He lights it. That is and so then not good. only that, he doesn't only light it. He keeps it burning. Yes. He keeps my lamp filled with oil. He keeps my heart burning for him. And so when I began to get that revelation from the Lord, and that's something I'll say is I don't think you can get that anywhere else, but straight from the Lord, hmm. you know, like someone could tell you that and it's like, okay, but the Holy spirit. That. Yeah. has to hover over those words and really make them true to you. Um, and so when I, when I started to really believe that and walk that out, I started to realize this isn't up to me. Hmm. Like he didn't, he didn't save me so that I could work really hard every day of my life to get close to him again and to not be bored and to, you know, Sheesh. he's the one who keeps the fire burning. And yes. um, so I think it's something, I think it's worth saying um, 
that there's no shame if you feel bored, right? There's no shame if like, it's not going to be every single day that I open my Bible that it's like, whoa, the words are jumping off the page and I'm getting all this revelation. It's, there's a discipline to spending time with God. Yes. And I think in the discipline then develops intimacy and then uh, encounters will flow from there. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 1000%. Like, because, because like in, when we use the word encounter to me, it's that moment where you know you're with someone like beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, you're, you feel his love. You feel his present. Yeah. You heard his voice. Like, any one of those things it's just knowing that someone is with you yeah and and so it's a it's like that relational part i think what makes it hard is feeling like i'm doing this alone yeah that's really what will just like really make it feel like a grind to 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 spend time with god your relationship with god is feeling like oh my gosh i've got to figure this out and yeah. so what's powerful about what you're saying is it's actually this whole thing's really on him. Right. But I think we, there is something that we bring to the table, which is Absolutely. our, it's actually our hearts. Mm-hmm. And David says, like, basically God's not pleased with your offerings, your <gasps> bulls Rafi, and goats. You that was that. my reading this morning. Oh, for real? That's crazy. <laughs> That's, that is crazy. Okay, keep going. Cause it's, this is going somewhere. Yeah, it's Psalms 51. <laughs> yes, that was it. And it's it. David's like biggest moment of brokenness, which it's like Bathsheba, the whole thing. And he writes this Psalm. And I think of that like, wow, David really could have ran from God. Like David could have had this be the beginning of like his hardest season with his relationship with God. Yeah. But instead he was honest and he brought his mess to the Lord. And I think that's, I would say in my life, and I would say across the board, like from talking to people, I think the biggest source of spiritual apathy or boredom is really like a hesitancy or just refusing to bring your honest emotion to God. Yes. And then it's religion Yeah, because you're trying to put on a face. Oh yeah. And that will, I'll I'll tell you one thing, nothing is going to make you more tired than feeling like you have to put on a mask. Or nothing will make you more bored. Yes. Because you're, I mean, it's this a lot of fake. work to put on a mask, but then it's just, there's no intimacy. Religion yes. is boring. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Say that again. Like, well, this is crazy because this morning, as we're talking, I'm getting just this picture of how Rosie and I were in her room this morning, which before we had kids, that room used to be our prayer room. Hmm. And so when I get in there in the morning, early before the kids wake up, I just remember the encounters I had in that room, though it's Rosie's room now, my two-year-old, it used to be my prayer room. And it just still has that feel of all the encounters I had with the Lord. So this morning, she actually woke up when I tried to slip out of bed. So it's 6.30 and we're both in there. And I said, Rosie, you can play with your toys. I'm going to, I'm going to spend time with Jesus and you can do that with me if you want to, or you don't have to, you know? And so we're sitting there and she gets, she just gets on her face and she just like is laying there for, I don't know how long. And then she gets up and she starts playing again. And and something that I can struggle with sometimes and have in the past is that spending time with God has to look a certain way. Hmm. And this morning I was just wrecked because Whoa. she was... She was playing in the presence of God, you know, like she was like, she is a child, but he says, be like a little child when you come to me. And so I think that spiritual boredom and apathy probably are the result of a lot of religion in trying to look a certain way when we spend time with God, trying to look a certain way when we're at church, whatever. And I think that the remedy for that is being like a child and having true like intimacy in the secret place with the Lord. And that doesn't have to look a certain way. In fact, it will look different for everyone. So we're sitting there and I'm like, okay, Psalm 21, it's August 21st. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I always count. It's Trace Howard. One of our amazing spiritual fathers told me about this, but he's Mm -hmm. like, read a Psalm and then count 30 and read the next one. And then count 30 till you're at the end of Wow. Psalms every day. So I do that a lot. So counted 30 from 21, which is 51. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. So I'm reading this morning in verse 18. It says, for you don't want sacrifices or I would give them. And I'm sitting there watching my two and a half year old play and then get on her face and then play and then get on her face. And I'm like, this is what God wants. <laughs> he wants my heart. He wants me how I am. Oh my gosh. Um, You don't take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice to God is a broken spirit. God, you won't spurn a broken, chastened heart in your good pleasure. 
make prosper, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in righteous sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then they will offer bulls at your altar. So it's talking about how the Israelites used to bring sacrifices. And he's like, God doesn't want that. He wants your heart. He wants your broken and contrite spirit. And that's what I had to give the Lord this morning. But before I saw the way Rosie was being totally herself in the presence of God, I probably would have tried to come to him cleaned up. Right. But once I saw that, I was like, oh, you don't care about that, Lord. You want me how I am. And that's kind of ugly this morning. Yeah. Because to be honest, last night, I wasn't very kind to my husband. Mm. And that's how I went in to the presence of God this morning. Like, blah. Dang. And I was about to put a worship song on and be like, I love you, God. And I'm just so. And then I see Rosie being herself. And I'm like, all right, I can be myself. Yeah. He doesn't want our burnt offerings or our attempts to get close to yeah. him or look a certain way. He wants our hearts. Yes. Oh, my gosh. God is so, like, he's just so different than us. Yeah. And I, I, I'm i thinking as you're talking, like, he's just not, like, he's not there. He's not in your mask. Like, no. he's not going to be there. He's waiting at your honest emotions. Mm-hmm. He's waiting at your pissed off part of your heart. And he's standing there going like, this is what I want to talk about. Yeah. Like I'm over here and you're like, no, let's do like, like scripture reading today. And yeah. like, let's talk about how like I can be like better at this or that. And, mm-hmm. and, and he's like standing over at like, like when are you really going to tell yeah, me what's the, going the on? The thing you're avoiding thinking about going like, I would love to sit in this with you. Mm-hmm. I would love to sit in your disappointment with you. I would love to sit in your frustration with you and and talk about my perspective, but God can handle it. Like, that's the thing. Most people, a lot of like my life of in those moments of spiritual boredom and apathy, I found myself going to friends first with things that I needed to talk to God about, with with my frustration, with my disappointment with people in my life, my mm. parents, my siblings, my leaders. I would go to a, a trusted friend and talk about it. And I would feel sort of like, oh, like I processed this. Kind of fulfilled, but there's something in me that's still not fulfilled. Of course, yeah. yeah. It was like a cycle. Yeah. And I got I've caught in too. that cycle. And then I'm going to God, not talking about the real stuff I'm thinking about and being all, you know, whatever. Different. And then eventually I'm not going to God at all. And because, then there's spiritual boredom and apathy. Yes. So, yeah. but the But the flame is not, like he's not far away. Right. He, he he can feel far away in those moments, but he is not far away. He's yeah. as close as turned attention. And the second that you're honest with him, he is that father running off the porch, like yes. toward you. Like I'm I'm here. Like the one you take one step towards me, and I'm bolting after yeah. you because that's what he delights in. Like right. what that psalm is saying. And I I'm getting like ripped about me too during during that time when David was king. Yeah, he established his tabernacle right Mm -hmm. and he put the ark of the covenant which represents the presence of god in that tabernacle dang there's the timer and but what's wild is the whole time david's tabernacle was happening they were still offering bulls and goats to god Mm. in the temple but there was no ark like god wasn't there wow They they were doing it for themselves wow and that's, I feel like that's so often why we get bored. Yes. Is we're here offering our sacrifices in a place where God is not he even said, there. I'm not there. He's literally not I even there. I was just thinking um, a few years ago on Easter, I got up that morning and I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to put the dress on. I'm going to do my hair. Mm. We're going to go sing songs at church. And and I'd been living a different way Um from the time I was a child when I was just every Easter was, it was beautiful, but it was, there was a lot of religion. It was just like, we, yeah. we do the thing, we go to church we, and those things aren't bad, but I had never truly encountered God on Easter. I'll say it mm. that way. And so I'm, I'm, I'm in my prayer room, the same room I was in this morning. Mm. And, um, and I'm in Luke where the two women go uh, to the tomb and the angel says, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. And the Lord said, Sarah Beth, I'm not in the tomb of dead works or religion. I'm alive. And I think that that is what has healed my spiritual boredom and apathy is knowing that 
God, you're alive. You're not, you're not in the tomb of my dead works. You're not in the tomb of religion. You're not at the place where I would try to offer you my sacrifices, you know, or put on a religious face. You're alive and you want my heart. And I think that is the biggest thing that has healed that for me. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I and feel the presence of God. I know. What can I, we're supposed to do handlebars? But I just feel like maybe just pray for yeah whoever yeah. is watching. Yeah, Holy Spirit, I thank you. Thank you for your presence, Lord. I thank you for every person listening to this right now. And I just hear the Lord say, it's not business as usual. It's not just a 10-minute YouTube video. I want your heart. I want to encounter you right now in your car, in your house, at work, wherever you are. And so, God, I thank you that you would just reach out your hand to every person listening. And I pray, God, that you would um, encounter them, that you would show them that you're not in the tomb of dead works or religion, that you're yes. alive and you want to speak to them, Lord. You want to hear them out, God. You want them to be real with you. So just help us, Holy Spirit. Help us be real with you. Yeah. Oh, thank yes. you, Jesus. Oh my gosh. Amen. Amen. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Um, Lord, thank you for this. Yes. Thank you guys for being here with us. Uh, That's a wrap. Until the next one. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? My name is Zay. I'm from North Carolina. Um, I'm an active listener of the Handlebar Podcast. Two things I love about this podcast is how practical it is, but also how authentic it is. And just being able to marry those two things together and just, you know, hear the Holy Spirit voice through that, I think is an awesome thing. So um, if you enjoy that episode, go ahead and subscribe here on YouTube. And you can also uh, stream on any podcast platform there is. Continue to check us out.